everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have recently just released a video about Toronto's bookstores and the bookish scene. And if you want to go around Toronto bookstores, I will link that video for you and you can check it out. But what if you're looking for bookish and nerdy activities around Toronto and you'd like to be on a budget because the economy. I got you. So. Today I'm going to talk to you about all of the free bookish and nerdy things you can do around the city. Um, some at the end maybe could require money if you'd like to buy something, but I want to tell you about them because these are places that I visit at least once or twice a year and I like to keep them in rotation and I've nerded out in all of these places and absolutely loved them and they are free. So. I want to share them with you. So the very first place you want to go to is the Toronto Reference Library. This is a library, it is in use, but it has a few hidden secret things that you might want to know about. So the first thing you want to know about is that on the fifth floor of the Reference Library, there is a room and a special collection dedicated entirely to Sherlock Holmes. There are books, retellings, biographies, Anything to do with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and Sherlock Holmes. They have decorations, they have correspondence between, you know, Doyle and the Strand or publications in the Strand magazines, any kind of retelling that's ever been told about Sherlock Holmes, it's there. They also have rare archives, so they have things that you could request specially to see, like actual manuscripts or things written in handwriting by Doyle. I've gotten to play around with a few in the past and it's just so cool. So if you're a Sherlock Holmes fan, definitely go there. They also hand out publications and flyers that have to do with uh, Sherlock Holmes fan groups like the bootmakers and anything to do with Sherlock Holmes, that's your spot. Downstairs, you will also find Bookends, which is a very tiny used book shop but they sell books for like a dollar or 50 cents. Like you're looking at cheap, cheap, really cheap books. They have classics, they have some hidden gems, really nice staff, but it's worth visiting. And the third place you want to look at in that library is at the downstairs area where the bookends is. There's always an exhibition going on and those exhibitions are incredible. They take months and months of planning. Currently, the one that's on right now actually features some books from other rare book libraries and other collections around the city. So it's kind of got a big amalgamation of cool things happening around the city and its history. So it's really cool to check it out. But every single time in the past, it's had extraordinary things out on display. Totally worth seeing. And even though the lights are sometimes off, once you enter through the, the doors, the lights turn on. So don't think that it's closed. It's, it's always open if the library is open. So absolutely check it out. It's so cool. The other thing that you might want to look out for at the reference library are the, the lectures that they have on. So they always have visiting speakers and visiting authors. And if you want to read the book in advance um, and then go to see them speak, it's always free and it has great community kind of um, vibes. I don't know. I love it. I would go there anytime, every time. One of the best places in the world. The second library branch you want to check out, this is the Lillian H. Smith Library. So this is on College at College in Spadina. You will recognize it, but there are two amazing things about this particular branch. The first one is on the third floor. You will find the Merrill Collection of Rare Science Fiction and Fantasy Books. Now, when you enter in this space, if you do want to use it, you do have to put your backpack in a locker and it's tr it's a rare book library, so you have to treat it like that. But you can request books from the, the back room or the archives where they have really rare science fiction and fantasy books and they'll have anything in there and they also have little display cases out in the in the reading room and they'll have an exhibit it's been eye-opening i've seen one on terry pratchett i've seen one on women sci-fi authors i've seen so many art and artistic designs of science fiction and fantasy it's such a great space but it's worth seeing and, and the, the exhibition cases and, and if you want to take out things from the back room, it's, it's really great. Just make sure you correspond with the librarian on site beforehand if you do want something retrieved for you. And 
the second really cool place in that building is on the fourth floor, which is the Osborne collection of rare children's books. And that is, wow. Like the books that they have up there, the exhibitions that they have year round are so amazing. And you'll find things like really teeny tiny books written for children or really rare books, like the first illustrated children's book, the Orbis Pictus and um, illustrated things, Canadian uh, literature for children. And the exhibitions often rotate as well in that space. And you'll have things like just books about bears or fairy tales and retellings. And there's combinations of rare books and art a lot of people don't know that this exists. So if you find yourself there, go on the third and fourth floor of the Lillian H. Smith and you will be amazed. Super worth going to. And I know this because every time I have a friend visiting from any other country, those are the places I take them to and they're free and it always blows their mind. So go to those places. Now, a lot of tourists or people, when they hear about cool things to do in Toronto, they hear about Casa Loma and it is incredible. It's a beautiful building. It is a bit pricey, but it's, it's worth seeing and it's got history and charm. But right next to it is an overlooked space and that's the Spadina House Museum. So this was named uh, after the Anishinaabe word uh, for highland or ridge, and it's, it's where the place is. This mansion used to belong to the Austin family. And the reason I call it bookish is because if you kind of enjoy like Downton Abbey and kind of books about um, upper class, lower class, or even Lady Beaton's book on household management. I don't know, I find bookish people are usually into that kind of um, TV show or vibe, you might really enjoy this museum. It is free. You just have to let them know when you plan to come to visit so that they could book you a spot just so that it doesn't fill out. So it might be more popular on some days, but if you do go, it's absolutely free and you get to experience a very intimate tour. They have a tour guide that takes you around and it's usually about 45 minutes to an hour and you get to see really cool vintage things. Um, the kitchen is really great and it has all these old kind of uh, vintage items on shelves and you get to see the lifestyle of someone very different. It is like Toronto's Downton Abbey sort of feeling. So you have the, the servants quarters and the main family quarters and what, what's happened over time. And you have a lot of the history of Toronto as well in there, especially at the beginning where you watch a an introductory documentary before the tour begins. It's so worth your time. And the people there are incredible and they're knowledgeable and so, so friendly and kind. So it's definitely somewhere I would recommend you go. And on a similar note to this one, further down south across the street from the Eaton Center or around that area is the, the Mackenzie House. So this is the house that belonged to the politician and mayor of Toronto, William Lyon Mackenzie. And he was a very controversial figure. He was also an exile. And this particular place is good for you if you're a bookish person because one, you will learn a lot about the history of Toronto specifically. You will learn a lot about its early stages. And also there is a printing room. There are printing presses because Mackenzie printed a lot of uh, things and that's what made him a little bit controversial and you can even do demos where you get to print your own things on old-fashioned printing presses iron presses you might even get to put your own name in there and print it out and do kind of activity uh, at the exit there's usually a teeny tiny corner with some books you can buy I got this book which is about really old Toronto and it just it blew my mind I've been there three or four times one time we went there around Christmas and they even offered us cider and it just made me feel so cozy and it's got these old vibes to it like you have really old creakety stairs and um, beds that are kind of tied together in the old-fashioned way and there's even a wreath there made entirely out of hair so a lot of fun things you can do there and it's free it is free you can go there again you might have to let them know you're going correspond in advance fifth place i really like to go to at least once a year usually in the fall it's kind of become a little tradition for me is the peter pan statue 
There is a statue at the intersection of Avenue and St. Clair. It is kind of in a gated place, like outside of a building, but it's a statue that was raised in honor of a high school nearby that performed Peter Pan in the 20s, I think. Um, but it's so cute and it's so beautiful. And I like it because it gives me a direction. Like I have a little pilgrimage that I need to do and a, a destination. So I choose this spot just so I have a place to go when I want to take a really long walk. And um, it's so beautiful. It's got little details like squirrels and fairies. And it's just something bookish or book related. And it's a little bit hidden. Not a lot of people know about this spot, but it's beautiful and it's it's free. You get to go and you get to enjoy it. Okay, so this place that I'm going to mention, you do have to be respectful and careful, okay? Because it's generally more restricted in many ways. So this is the Thomas Fisher Rare Books Library. It's at the University of Toronto. It is the front of the giant Robarts Library building. And I'm mentioning this because I was a student there for so many years and so many people didn't even know it existed. Now the books themselves, you do have to go through a very particular process to request and to look at. So that's, you know, a bit more um, of a hassle and you have to work through it. And obviously the staff there are working. So if you do have special requests, it, it takes a bit of a process, but it does say online that it's open to the public. And it is specifically at the entrance. When you walk in, there's always an exhibition on. And these exhibits are amazing. And when you walk in, you also get to look up and see the library. And it looks like what Belle sees when the beast is like, open your eyes, look. It's so beautiful and incredible. And it's honestly Toronto's greatest treasure, seriously. Like it's the most beautiful space you'll be in. And it is free to see the exhibit at the front and to, to see the space. And if you do have further questions, there's staff there. Um, they're very friendly, very smart. A lot of the people there are incredible. This is open during the week. It's not open on the weekends. And you wanna be careful. And you know, it is kind of a UFT academic community. So you wanna be respectful of the students and of the space. Seventh place is kind of literary in that Ellen Montgomery lived in Toronto for a brief period of time, especially near the end. And if you're at Jane Station and you go slightly south, there is a park named after her and her house, which she used to live in around there, has a plaque in front of it. So it's called the Ellen Montgomery Park. It's bookish because it's named after her. So if you just want a new place to explore and to visit, that might be a really cool park to go to that's bookish themed and free. When it comes to the bigger things like the Art Gallery of Ontario, the ROM, uh, the Royal Ontario Museum and the one across the street from it, the Gardner Museum that has um, pottery and clay pots, which by the way is temporarily closed until October. And then there's a textile museum. All of these places, which are very, very popular, have an occasional day of the month that they're free. I'm not going to say it out here just in case they change it, but you can look up on their website when it is free. There are sometimes like one day in the month or one day during the week or in the evenings on a slower day they do have free events but a lot of people don't know that if you go to the public library like the toronto public library and you have a library card there are ways to get tickets to these places for you and your family for free at any time uh, but you do have to follow some rules so you have to talk to the librarians at specific branches there is a limitation on how many times you can request things, um, but you can probably figure out a way, given the links I'll put down below, to go to these places for free. So there is a program in place for that. So definitely check it out. But one of the museums that's often overlooked and is in this cluster of potentially free places you can go to is the Aga Khan Museum. So this is a museum that focuses entirely on Islamic art. When I went there, the amount of medieval manuscripts and books, just wow. It is a bit out of the way. It's closer to where the Science Center was or used to be or is. We'll see what happens with that. But um, it's in that area of Toronto. And if you go through the public library system that I just mentioned, you could visit it for free. 
uh, but it is worth going to. Uh, absolutely fascinating. The city has so many little free libraries. There's so many. If you Google them, a lot of them are registered. Some are hidden, unfortunately, but you'll come across them by surprise. But they are all over town and they're worth checking out if you can Google a few of them. They do have a map on the little free library website where the people who did register have their little free library featured. And it just kind of gives you like a quest to go on that's fun and it's free and it gives you something to do that's bookish. And speaking of Ella Montgomery and the plaque, any historical figures or literary figures in Toronto that were artists or cool or memorable in some way, wherever they did live, there will be a plaque out front uh, telling you about it. But we don't have a lot of authors museums in the way that England does with the Brontes or Jane Austen or Shakespeare. But uh, the people that we do have oh, got a plaque out front um, because their house continues to be lived in and it is a residential area. So don't actually knock on the doors because there are people who live there who don't know you or the author. But you can take a picture of the plaque out front and you know it's kind of like another fun pilgrimage. And there is a website, which I'll link down below, which will tell you about all of these plaques. Like Cabbage Town is great with, uh, with these plaques and artists and really cool historical people. And they have a registry of like all of the places that you can find all these people. And the cemeteries as well, if you wanna see their uh, final resting place is another kind of tool you can do with, with pilgrimages on dead authors or dead writers or artists in Toronto. Okay, so the last two things I'm gonna mention are technically places that are not free. I mean, one of them is if you don't buy anything, but I wanna mention them. So the first is the Harry Potter store across the street from the art gallery. So if you cross the street from the AGO and you go down some stairs, there is a Harry Potter store. Everything in there is Harry Potter merch, Harry Potter books, anything to do with Harry Potter, the four houses, anything at all. It's all in there. It's magical just to walk through. You don't necessarily have to buy anything, but it's absolutely stunning. And it's worth visiting if you are interested and if you just want somewhere to go and visit, you don't have to buy anything. Just saying, it's there. And the last thing, which is a bar slash restaurant in the village on Church Street, and it's called Stormcrow Manor. And this place, is completely designed and decorated for the mega nerds, everything. There's a big bust of Cthulhu, there's monsters, there's a Mary Shelley Frankenstein kind of lab where they serve alcohol. There are movie references everywhere. The stairwell has lights from Stranger Things with the, with the alphabet, like everything in this place is so magical. The menu is magical and makes references to bookish things. It is such an ultimate book nerd place to go. And I guess if you do go in, you do have to buy something, whether it's a drink or a meal, but it's so worth visiting. It's so beautiful. It's wonderful. Like just, just go, it's, it's magical. I'm sorry that the last two things do kind of require some pay, but overall, if you go to any of the places I mentioned, usually they should be free. And I'll link down below all of the information you need to know if you do want to plan a visit, but these are some of my favorites. And I hope you enjoy being your bookish nerdy self in the city of Toronto. Bye.